it's pack it up, boys. Trade everybody. Rebuild. I mean, good God. Can we just relax? <laughs> All right. Can we just relax? <laughs> What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of Beyond the Diamond Podcast here on the Apollo Podcast Network. Brian Lima, Apollo Dez here with you. This episode is brought to you by Bravado Spice. I'm on location. Dez is in the new downtown Houston office just a couple of blocks away from Minute Maid Park. It's been a while, Dez. I'm happy to be back on. What do you got in your hand there? You know... I got some sauce. I, I don't like to get lost in the sauce. No one likes to get lost in the sauce, but this is the sauce I want to get lost in. Yep. We got some creamy herb jalapeno, some pineapple habanero, some ghost pepper and blueberry, which is, in theory, it sounds like sounds awful. something Willy Wonka, right? Would do? Yeah. Amazing. Great sauce. Yeah. And then the serrano, is it basil? 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 It's basil. Basil? <laughs> Yeah, we got the sauce sauce. We got the sauce today, bro. And again, this episode of Beyond the Diamond is sponsored by Bravado Spice. Thank you to the whole team over at Bravado Spice. Des, the Astros are headed back home. They've got an off day today as we record this on Thursday. They just took a series again from the Arlington Rangers. Two out of three. Now they come home. They play the White Sox, and then they welcome in the on-fire New York Mets. Let's just hit on... You know, let's just let's just a couple guys being dudes. It's been a while. Uh, let's get back into it. Get back into routine. Adapt, adjust. Um, it was a good sight to see the Astros get back on the winning track. They didn't look so good against the Miami Marlins. They they dropped two out of three to those guys somehow, some way. Uh, but then they get right back into the winning column against the Arlington Rangers. So just kind of opening thoughts uh, against the Arlington Rangers. Yeah, it was a get right series. Um, for sure, we needed it, especially after dropping the first one the way we did uh, to battle back and take a series is always the biggest thing, especially when they were kind of just dead in the water until Corey Seager made the most bonehead decision I've ever seen in my entire life. Yeah, I don't understand like, that think, one. That was the biggest gift in the world. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just, don't know what he was doing, but we'll take it. Um, Tuck is a superstar. We, we had him on. We talked to him. We're like, dude, you don't know how good you're going to be. I still don't think he knows how good he's going to be because he's a perennial superstar now. Yeah. And um, and then we just took it to him uh, in game three, and it was pretty immaculate, uh, some would say. Yeah. Yeah. With uh, with Kyle Tucker, you know, he started off a little bit slow, um, caught fire, and now he's swinging it like we thought he was going to swing it. He had a big-time bomb against the Rangers after uh, – yeah, you said Seeger makes – an extremely bonehead decision to try to throw out Jose Altuve instead of get the double play, get sure outs and give up one run. Next thing you know, uh, in baseball, it's a snowball effect. You give guys extra outs. They make you pay for it, especially at the big league level. And that's exactly what we saw. Something you really wouldn't expect to see out of a 200 plus million dollar guy in, in Corey Seager. But uh, hey, he's in Arlington now, baby. That's what they do up there. South, South Oklahoma. Oklahoma baseball, dude. Bingo. Bingo. What a bonehead decision by him. But good. Good. And uh, actually, you know what? If we even look back before the Miami series, they lost two out of three to Seattle. So um, I would say the Astros fan base was in shambles for a while. I still oh, think yeah. some of them are extremely irrational and hot and cold. They're willing to, you know, as soon as they drop one game, it's like no it's the end of the world. world. Oh, it's the end of the world. No. It's, oh, end dude, the it's, world. it's pack it up, boys. Trade everybody. Rebuild. I mean, good God. Can we just <laughs> relax? <laughs> All right. Can we just relax, please? It is June, and they are what? What's their? What's their? Uh, what are they right now? Damn it! I We're had it. Thirty-nine up. and twenty-four. Thirty-nine right. and twenty-four. We're 39 24. Yeah. We dropped shit games to shit teams. And yeah. we're 39 and 24. Nine and, and a half games. Hammering, nine and, and a half games up the in the West. Yeah. A lot. Okay. Yeah. So the Yankees are 46 and 16. That's pretty fucking impressive. If the Astros didn't dick around against teams that suck, we'd literally be like 44 and like 17. Yeah. 44 and 18. They would be um, right up there with the Yankees. Yeah. So they would be right look, up there with the Yankees. We have a nine and a half game lead on the Rangers, 10 and a half on the Angels. Seattle, who is, you know, their problem, 11 games back. <laughs> and Oakland is, Oakland's already 18 and a half back. Like mm. it's over. Like we play for pennants here in Houston. Like who, who gives a shit about the AL West flag we'll put up in the same. We'll probably put it in section 420. Yeah. You get a little toked up and you can see the AL West 
flag up there. Who cares about where's about the pennants yeah. out and left field? We're we're fine. God man, we're fine. Dude, to be able to sit here and micromanage every little thing in a game in a 162 game season, one, it's exhausting. Two, that means we're in a really prime spot to do that. Like yeah. everyone's clamoring about Maldi, everyone's clamoring about Breggs, everyone's kind of clamoring about Yuli. Guys, we're up nine and a half. Just get everyone healthy, get everyone through August into September, and we're gonna be rolling. Yeah, I I don't I don't understand it. I really don't. Um, it, it it really it pisses me off to be honest with you. The the more, and I'll be the first one. I have admitted on Beyond the Diamond here on the Apollo Podcast Network that I owed Miles Straw an apology. I owed Kyle Tucker an apology. The more that I learn about this game, and the more that we watch and we study it and we do these podcasts and we talk amongst ourselves and and we make relationships with guys like Alex Bregman, guys like Tyler Straub. Uh, we've talked to Kyle Tucker. We've talked to uh, uh, Ryan Stanick, and the list goes on and on. All these guys, uh, not to mention one of the best pitching coaches in the league in Brent Strom, we've talked to him in depth before. The more that I learn, the less that I critique guys in the big leagues because they're at the perennial level. I don't give a shit if a guy's hitting 220. They're at the big league level for a reason. So this stuff about... Uh, first of all, why are we trying as a fan base to say we should send down Alex Bregman and we should send down Yuli Gurriel? They can't get sent down. <laughs> what, what, what are we doing? Right? What are we doing here? It, you know, look, I get it, man. Yeah, it's probably frustrating. It, you think it's frustrating. frustrating for you as a fan? Look, you not think it's look, frustrating for them bingo. as a fucking all-star, right. as a MVP candidate, as yeah. a guy who led the league in fucking batting average, Brian's favorite stat? Like, do you not think they're not frustrated? First of I mean, all, first of all, it's I'm a, big, I'm a big OPS guy now. All okay, right, dude, stand stand up for something <laughs> one time. Just stand stand for one something. Big OPS. I'm sorry, calling you goalposts. You just move in the wind, bro. You just move it in the wind. Goalposts, Lima. Big OPS guy now. <laughs> OPS guy. Batting average just doesn't tell the whole story. I've been trying to tell you and Josh that for a long time. You're unbelievable. Josh is taking ricochet you know shots. What? He's not even on camera. You know what? You know what? Your 12 year old Banditos team yeah. probably bullied you into OPS. This is probably the the true story. That your e true Hollywood story. Your 12 year old bullied you, and <laughs> you're like setting the lineup due to batting average. These 12 year olds are like, "Hey, old man River, this is the OPS. Why are you betting little Jimmy to three hole? Because he's betting you know, 350. His OPS is 500. What are we doing? You know, I've had, got bullied." I, I've had some, <laughs> oh my God. I hope none of them watch this because they're gonna be like, we told you, coach. No, I, I look, I told my I told the parents on the team, don't ever come at me at stats because I'm not watching your stats. <laughs> or I'm not looking at them. I am not looking at those damn stats because they keep track of it, man. Diamond cast and game changer is a big thing in youth baseball these days. And they come at me left and right about, hey, have you seen uh have you seen the average? Look, and I'm like, I'm the first guy, I'm like, don't come at me at batting average. You got over a thousand OPS. Hey, have, have some talk. wherewithal. Have, have some, some wherewithal. Have some wherewithal. And that goes back into being a fan of the Astros. Have some wherewithal. It's June. I understand certain guys are struggling. But look, at the end of the day, Bregman's not coming out of the lineup. It would be different if Alex Bregman was leading the team in strikeouts. He's walking a ton. He's leading the team in walks. So what that shows me is that he, something is going on mechanical for Alex Bregman. Yeah, that's and that's an is. easy fix. Or I say it's easy. He's at the highest level. Yuli Gurriel, to me, a little bit more concerning because the pitch selection that we've seen so far from Yuli, is, uh, it's, it's a cause for concern because he doesn't usually chase pitches out of the zone like we've seen so far. But the dude's been – he's been in professional baseball, not just here, but in, in – uh, in in uh, overseas, so to speak, for years, for years. So let's 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 calm down, let's relax. The Astros are up nine and a half games in the AL West. They're gonna get back to the ALCS, and, and let's just calm down and have a little wherewithal. There's a little wherewithal. <laughs> Some wherewithal. This is the wherewithal episode. That's what we're gonna talk about. Uh, you know, I know the base is just upset and you got to make mountains out of molehills or molehills out of mountains, whatever the saying is. But 
there's a legitimate thing where you could have a shit year, but get hot in October and no one yeah. gets a flying fuck right. about what you did the other 162. This team is built for October. It's all about October. It's about getting that second ring. It's about getting playing for another pennant. Like, who cares? Yeah. We've already won the West. Just keep stacking wins. Get that bye. And, and just all roads lead to the Yankees and, and the Astros. That's let's let's fucking pull the curtain back. Yeah. Yes, there's some really good teams, but all roads right now lead to Yankees, Astros. And we're gonna get that next week in the regular season, which is gonna be treated like the World Series for the Yankees fans when we're already thinking about October, but all roads lead to that match. And so saying all that, Yuli's had some bad Octobers and he's had really good years. Okay. He's going to have a bad year. Hopefully he has a really good October. I trade that in a heartbeat. Oh yeah. So I, we are very privileged as a fan base we're spoiled to be able spoiled to We've be able spoiled. to have these conversations because look all these other superstars on the team if they struggle then that means the team is struggling like we are so stacked and loaded one through nine as as a, as a baseball team that when one superstar can struggle it's not a life or death for a team like you have seven other guys to pick you up because we are just constructed in a crazy manner. So it allows it allows the Yulies, allows the Breggs, allows all these guys to the Maldies to to work on stuff in season. And a lot of teams don't have that opportunity because you just got to fight through and hopefully it clicks. Where we have the the I don't know the white word. We have the 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 team that's built to allow you to like work on things during the season. Yeah. Like who else has that? Yeah. Other than the also, Dodgers. Right. And that also goes into the division that the Astros are in, and they dominate the division as they should. But I mean, you look at look at Jeremy Pena. He's on the 10 day IL with right, no, is it left thumb or right thumb? Whatever. He's got a thumb. I think dis- it's his left. Left thumb discomfort. I'll cut my left thumb. I'll cut it off if I need to. Yeah. You, you want my thumb here? Like, take it. Like, it's all yours. But he has played exceptionally, exceptionally well this season. He's probably going to be the front runner for rookie of the year. Okay. He has stepped in and filled in for Carlos Correa, so to speak, and he has done fantastic. He goes out, Aledmus Diaz slides in, and the lineup keeps moving. Like moving. Not, not a lot of teams can say that. That just doesn't happen with a lot of teams in the big leagues. Aledmus Diaz comes in, and it's like nobody left the lineup. And you've got guys like, yeah, I think the center field position needs to be shored up. I think it should be Chaz every day. I agree. But there are intangibles that Jose Siri brings to the table that is getting him playing time. You've got Jordan Alvarez, who's played a lot of left field. So you have Michael Brantley, who is still a professional hitter, who's just swinging it as he always does, more at the DH role. You've got Kyle Tucker. I mean, look at one through nine. So, yeah, does it is it frustrating as a fan to sit there and look at a guy that – was second in MVP vote, voting a couple years ago in Alex Bregman and it's struggling. Yeah, I'm sure it is. But you said it earlier, Des. Imagine the frustration level for him. Imagine the frustration level for Yuli Gurriel. Okay? But look, they're big league hitters. They're going to figure things out. They're going to go on runs. They're going to have slumps. And that's that's for everybody. Jose Altuve started this year off terrible. Like he was bad in the first month or whatever. Everyone, everyone was right. on his ass, and now everyone's throwing a parade for him. Like, right? Baseball finds its way; it finds its levels. Like, yeah. And we've had the dead ball. We're hitting the shit out of the baseball, and we're getting nothing out of it. Like, yeah. Let's have some wherewithal. Let's just, yeah, just a little bit. Just a, this is the wherewithal episode, and and as we the immaculate through, wherewithal episode, and then let's not to let's not forget about the immaculate inning, something that Major League Baseball has literally never seen. Hold on, before that, I'm I just want to put this out there. I'm how I, how do I phrase this? I think the AL West is the AL Central last year, where there's like one really yeah. good team and everything else sucks, so it's kind of fluffed up a bit. Yep. And I would be worried if this team hasn't been in October for the last half decade. Because does that make sense? Yeah, because I mean, perfect example, the Chicago White Sox. Yeah, like, like I that's I the feel perfect like example. We're gonna have I, we may flirt with hundred wins. And like I think it's fluffed up because how bad the division is, but 
it's not like we're coming in thinking we're the best team ever like, because of the, we beat shitty. Like, I would be very worried if this team was young. Right. And like like a 2015 Astros, like getting all the success and getting all this stuff and like, oh, it's going to be a walk in the park. Thank God that we've been in October for the last seven years that they know October is like is what they're playing for and all, all the ins and outs of October baseball. So <clears throat> I just had to get that off my chest because the division is pretty shit. I mean, you look at all of the guys on this roster and they have so much October experience together, not just individually, but together. This isn't the White Sox from last year because you look at the White Sox. They were a damn good team. They played in a shit division. They ran away with it. And then they meet up with the Astros. And I mean, we saw what happened. More experience, little to none, no experience. So that October experience, the veteran clubhouse that the Astros have is going to pay dividends like we always see. We say it every year. We say it every year. So, man, just relax. Shit. Anyway, back to the immaculate inning. It was the first time on record that there have been two immaculate innings on a single calendar date, let alone in the same game or by the same team. Luis Garcia, Phil Maton, obviously Martin Maldonado was behind the plate, and it was the same three hitters. Two dude, different innings, same three hitters. Now, like, right? I mean, come, like, like, come dude, on, me, you, figure you it gotta, out. You got to be Richie and uh, and 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 what's that movie? God dang it. Hmm. Bench warmers. You got to go yeah, up there Rich, with. Yeah. You got to go up there with a, a a plastic sword. You're 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 making contact some way. Like, I don't care if you like jump in front of the ball like lean your elbow and make sure there's not an official pitch yeah. do something it's call time immaculate inning but twice 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 same three hitters <laughs> same three guys <laughs> what are y'all doing <laughs> brother man i am yeah. <laughs> i am dude i am i'm getting catchers and i am hitting maldi's glove on my doing swing something i'm getting tossed yeah like, i am making i am i it may be a ball right down the middle i am getting tossed on strike one like i yeah. am Turn around, calling the umpire the worst thing you can call him, and getting tossed of like, I'm not going down. I'm not that guy. Yeah. Throw an elbow, throw your whole body, do something. Let me read this stat again, real quick. This, it was the first time on record there have been two immaculate innings on a single calendar date, let alone in the same game or by the same team. I wish they would have thrown in the same three hitters. And uh, uh, to make it even, more of a fantastic feat for the Astros. It was against the Rangers. Like, go figure it was against the Rangers. I love every single thing about it. And Phil Maton comes off like he doesn't give a shit. Like it didn't even happen. Dude is a serial killer. Did you see did you see the post the post game? I think yeah. Chandler, I'll pull it up. Yeah. Chandler, Chandler Rome's been on one. Like he is he's getting so sassy in the dog days, like as dog days are coming. I love it. But the response that um, Maton had on it was just laugh out loud funny because I don't want to paraphrase because it was so perfect. Yeah. It, <laughs> Rome, at, basically, Chan, I think Chandler, if I'm not mistaken, asked him, have you ever seen it before? I got, or it, something I got like, it. Yeah, okay. He goes, he, Chandler asked him, you ever thrown one in a high school college little league talking about a Macklin inning? Phil Maton, I have no idea. Probably doubt it. You ever seen one? Chandler asked him. He goes, yeah. In the second inning today. <laughs> Is that not a Phil Maton answer? Oh, my oh. God. That's just perfect. That oh, is amazing. That is perfect. Yeah, I, I, I really think people don't understand really the gravity of what we saw last night in that game. Two immaculate innings by the same team in the same game against the same the three, same three hitters. Dude. Could you imagine what those guys were feeling like? Like walking away, like what the fuck? Like what? What just happened? I, and like literally, it's an immaculate inning, so it's gonna go by quick as shit. Like right, nine strikes, nine pitches, three strikeouts. Like you just got to think, like what the hell just happened? Like <laughs> it, it, it honestly probably felt like the eighth inning, the game before, where they were up three nothing, yeah, a misplay by Seager. We we score a run, then a knock, and then a home run, and you're just like, how are we down four to three? It's yeah. that's probably that same whirlwind feeling of like, what the hell just happened here? Yeah, yeah. Phil Maton, nine pitches, nine fastballs. <laughs> hey, good for Phil though. He needed that. Yeah, he's been he's been he's been struggling a little bit. A little Not, bit yep. I mean, 
hasn't been like it was in October when he was just a killer. Um, I think the the peripherals and your advanced stats probably show that it's a his his actual numbers are you know should be a little higher. But man, he looked good. Yeah, he did look good. He looked immaculate. He looked, um, he looked immaculate. Some would say. Are you all right? Uh, yeah, it's, it's, oh, this, um, I know, dude. Immaculate, like it just gets to you, bro. It just gets <laughs> I had a to sneeze. You. you had a sneeze? Oh, yeah, well, dude. I feel like a jackass. What about some black garlic Carolina Reaper to open up your sinuses? <laughs> Are you going to sneeze? I'm trying, dude. It won't come out, man. Josh, can we edit this out? No, Shit. we're keeping this. We're keeping oh, this. God. If you're All watching, right, if you're not watching on YouTube, you can watch Brian at the uh, 22 minute mark fight a sneeze. Oh, my God. That sucks. That's the worst. All right, we're, let's segue into uh, upcoming games. The White Sox are coming into town, and they are in shambles. They were you, chanting. They were chanting "Fire Tony" a couple of think, days ago. Do you think on Friday or Saturday, Tony La Russa gets drunk and walks intentionally walks Jordan Alvarez <laughs> in a one two count? Because <laughs> because. He did that. What the fuck he are did you? That last what week, Tony Larusa. What is he doing, dude? Like, what are you doing? You're up in the count. You intentionally <laughs> walk him. No wherewithal. Oh, Zero. My God. Zero. So if I, I had to guess, it's going to be that Saturday game because it's a three ten start. So he might crack open his flask at about eight a.m., nine a.m. Maybe. You know, get the Saturday started off right. Get rid of the shakes from the night. A little darty. A little day party. <laughs> Oh, plus Justin Verlander is on the mound. So Framber goes tomorrow night. Oh, and it's on Apple TV. Can't wait to hear that broadcast. You know, we we talked about the Apple TV broadcast uh, a couple of weeks ago on the last edition of uh, Beyond the Diamond. Des, you were you were out of the office, and I did it with the with two guys in one film. Uh, the film, <laughs> the film fellas. <laughs> uh, Noah and oh, Garrett, wow. and we hit on the Apple TV broadcast because a lot of people. Love to shit on it these days. Um, what's the woman's name that's uh, that's on the broadcast? Katie Nolan. Katie Nolan. A lot of people, um, you know, are, were were uh, were trying to come down on her. I guess she had some, I don't know, choice tweets about the Astros at at some point, um, talking about the cheating and all that other BS. Which it doesn't bother me anymore. I mean, dude, I, I'm used to it. You know, anything trash can related, anything sign stealing i mean dude it's it's water under the bridge my it just it move on like if, you, if that's still your joke then like you need to come up with some new jokes but that broadcast is going to be friday night uh it's going to be framber valdez versus lucas giolito uh lucas giolito has good stuff but again they're <laughs> the white Sox are struggling um this season and then you've got verlander on saturday and then you've got christian javier uh johnny cueto starting against Justin Verlander. Uh, Johnny Cueto, he's got to be like 50 by now. So, you know, then you then you look ahead a little bit more. They're off on Monday. Then they welcome in the Mets for a two-game midweek set. You've got Jose Arquiti and Luis Garcia going against uh, the Mets, and the Mets are on fire. I mean, I, I never thought that we would see the Mets and the Yankees lead baseball in the same season. Usually, Yankees are always up there, and the Mets are kind of middle of the road. Now the Mets are just kicking everybody's ass. The Braves are uh, doing Braves things again. Yeah, I saw. Bra- Braves are only like four and a half back. Yeah, I saw. I saw. And and what sucks is uh, Albies just went down with a fractured foot. Yeah, that that's that yeah, sucks. That sucks. That that sucks. That sucks. Yeah. Chapman but, swinging it. Chapman swinging it well for the Braves. <laughs> <laughs> um, you man, know what a what a pickup for them on that one. Getting rid of Freddie Freeman or not re-signing Freddie Freeman. You mean Olsen? Good. Chapman's Sorry. in Toronto. Sorry, Olsen. Matt Olson. Sorry. Figure it out. Yeah. Matt Chapman, uh, Matt Olson. Same stuff. They're the same person. Uh no, I think it's a big week. Like I said, our schedule's really soft. So like playing these games kind of lined up three in a row. I like it. Keeps the edge going. You know, so now after these three series, you're now you're basically in July. Um yeah, after after the you've got the White Sox, the Mets, the Yankees, the Mets again, then that uh, random one game against the Yankees, and after that, you've got the Angels, the Royals, the A's, the Angels, the the A's. I mean, you get through this, and then it's All Star break. Yes, then it's All Star break. Yeah. Can you believe that? It we're already damn near at the All Star break. 
That's wild. Like that's insane. Yeah. So I like it. I like I like playing these tough games all in a row. Um, <clears throat> I think it's I think it's good for the guys. I really do. Um, yeah, you're gonna you know you keep pitching, them locked in, keep them engaged. Yeah, your pitching staff has has done exceptionally well uh, this season, and now They've you're gonna amazing. be tested. Yeah, now you're gonna be They're tested. Amazing. Now you're gonna be tested by two really good lineups in the Mets and the Yankees. And again, the, the White Sox. They're a good team, but I think uh, I really think Tony La Russa is losing that clubhouse uh, slowly but surely, and uh, losing the fan base as well. Not that that always matters, but when you when you when you have a home crowd ch- chanting "Fire Tony," like things aren't going well in Chicago. It's not uh, great. But then you've got the Mets and you've got the Yankees, and those lineups are. I mean, Aaron Judge might hit sixty bombs this year, dude. Let's. I I need to give him his roses. He bet on himself, and he's going to have arguably one of, right now on pace, have one of the best seasons since Bonds? Like, arguably? Arguably, yes. Like, pound for pound, legitly, and yeah, short porch, blah, blah, blah. Doesn't matter. Like, he's going to get paid, and not only that, the Yankees are probably going to have to overpay now if they want to keep him, because he's already 30, I think. Um, so you're going to give another big contract? to another over 30 player. Yep. They got the Cole contract. They got the Stanton contract. They're going to have the judge contract. I know they're the Yankees, but geez, um, way to bet on himself. I, I, I'll always, um, yeah, he's 30. Yeah. I'll always, I'll always champion the players that bet on themselves and it, and it pans out. He's um, <laughs> he, Oh my God. He's got a 313 average, 25 bombs, 49 RBI, and a an OPS of 1.067. That's wow. pretty damn good. <laughs> I bet his baseball savant page is just like nuclear red. God, man. I mean, I don't ever like cr- giving credit to anybody on the Yankees, but for what Aaron Judge is doing so far in the first half is just phenomenal. <laughs> like from a pure baseball standpoint – 25 bombs. Uh, we still got a month in the first half. He's going to end up with 35. He could end up with 40 if he goes on a big tear. That's insane. His, he, his, his Savant page is pretty. I mean, Jordan Alvarez's Savant page is probably better um, because the whiff percentage and K percentage for Judge is, is blue. But man, everything else hard hit 99, X slugging 100, XBA 99, max exit velo 99, average exit velo 100, X W OBA 100, barrel percentage 100. This is one out of 100. Uh, wow. Outs above average 79. Like, it, it, pretty damn, pretty it, impressive. If the Yankees are going to make a run to the World Series, they better do it this year because they have an old, old roster. Dude, yeah. look at these ages. Aaron Judge, 30. Aaron Hicks, 32. Um, DJ LeMahieu. Can you believe that DJ LeMahieu is already 33 years old? I feel like it was just yesterday he came into the league. Uh, Obviously, they've got Marwin Gonzalez at 33. Josh Donaldson is 36. Matt Carpenter, 36. I don't even know how to say this dude's last name. He's one of the catchers. Uh, Kyle Higa. Yeah, Kyle Higashioka, 32. Ryan Weber, 31. I mean, just, the list goes on and on. Lucas, is Jose the youngest? Yeah, Jose Trevino, 20, excuse me, 29. Garrett Cole is already 31. Oh, he's coming in the studio next two weeks from now. Uh, Garrett Cole is? No, Trevino. Oh, that's sick. When, when are we doing that? Two weeks? When the Yankees are in town, he's going to come through. That is sick. Let's we'll go. Uh, Good for him, man. Short episode. Um, yeah. I. Giancarlo. I'm sorry. Mike Stanton, 32. <laughs> He's only 32. Yeah, I feel like but, he's 34, 35. Man, if the Yankees are going to do it, they better do it this year. That's all I'm saying. I mean, they're not getting any younger. They're that, not. that window, and who knows what they're going to do with Aaron Judge. You, you, you're going to have to drop a shit ton of money to get to keep him. He's going to get paid. He is going to get paid. So that, that brings up another topic, and, and we can have this as the last topic. Uh, we'll go outside of Astros, and we'll talk MLB trade deadline. And um, one of the big topics and big names that keeps getting mentioned is Juan Soto. Des, do you think Juan Soto will be moved at the deadline? No, I don't think so. Um, I think maybe next year. It's just 
the return that you're going to have to give to get a Juan Soto is yeah. outrageous. And I think just let him stay there, let him keep doing what he does. And uh, the closer he gets to becoming a free agent, I think the Nationals will finally, you know, bite on a trade. But right now it's just way too much to give. But I mean, who would go get him right now? Who has who has the prospects to? Yeah. And like the Dodgers just did it last year with Max and getting Trey. But do they need Juan Soto? I mean, that's like the only team I could think they could do it. Um, yeah. I, I I mean, who's got the biggest farm system that can just dump out prospects to get him? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Wilson Contreras. Yeah. Hot 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 name topic. Astro fans want him. Um. I just don't see it happening. I don't see the Astros trading uh, for Contreras. I, I, it's not a Maldi thing. It's a Castro thing. I think that injury Castro had it really banged him up, and um, you're kind of seeing that kind of play out. I mean, but Castro was also the guy that pretty much swung the series in Boston. Like yeah. he, he, the entire last year, he was Mickey Mantle after the seventh inning, pinch hitting, um, coming up with big hits, and so. Uh, if this is the last year for Jason Castro, then you know I'm gonna enjoy it. Um, I I could see us maybe getting a uh, another catcher backup. Maybe they want to do that, but Wilson Contreras is gonna cost too much. Uh, and especially if you go get him, like that means if you're making that trade, he's your starter. And they already said they're not budging off, you know, moving Maldi out of the starting role. So um, I don't see it happening because you'd have to give up a lot, and then. If you give up a lot, you got to play them, and then that you're not you're not going to play yeah. them over Maldi. So right, um, I think the biggest the biggest move that I want to see them make is go get another arm yep. in the pin. Yep, you can always have it's always a surplus to have arms in the pin, and I really, really, really want Trey Mancini. I was he is literally like He's, this is this is the next name I have. Trey yeah. Mancini is the guy Look that I was us. just gonna. I was Look just gonna us. ask you, Trey Mancini. Uh, I mean, he's he's in Baltimore. Obviously, Baltimore is is not good. Um, you know, he's plays first. He's, yep, his outfield power bat. He's earning seven point five this year and has a ten million dollar mutual option for twenty twenty three with two hundred fifty thousand dollar buyout. Um, he he literally can play the corners. He's got versatility. And he's swinging it pretty well. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if the Astros made a move to try to get Mancini. I think the Astros should try to go get another arm, whether it's the bullpen or a starter. And then it's it's it always comes down back down to who are the Astros going to move? And then you have to think: Is it Chaz McCormick? Is it Jose Siri? You got to think that you're going to include one of those guys, right? Because Jake Myers is doing his rehab stint. We still don't know the health of of um, uh, Lance McCullers Jr. Obviously, he's doing more flat grounds. He's throwing off the mound. He's starting to uh, get up upper velocity on some of his out not outings, but some of his rehab starts, so to speak, um, up in the upper 80s. But we don't know if we're going to see him this season, really. And honestly, we don't know if we're going to see him this season. And if it is, it's going to be late in the year. So you might need to go get. And then what's going on with Jake Odorizzi? When is he going to make his rehab start? So with all that being said. I would probably expect James Click to try to go get another arm. And and I agree with you, Des, that an arm in the bullpen is always a good thing. Yeah. Always a good thing. Uh, so so whether, I, they, whether they go get a starter or just go get another perennial arm is is kind of how I see it. I, I view it as I view it, I view it as this. You your expectations are Lance McCullers and Jake Odorizzi are coming back. Um, you expect them to have some rust to perform. Those are getting those are getting key guys back for this team to really strengthen a great uh, pitching performance. This the staff has done up to this point. Yeah. Um. You had you have Luis Garcia who has his ups and downs in, in the playoffs. He was young, but he's he's going to learn from it and grow from it. You have Jose Ucrity who's done pretty bad this year. Had a good start. He ditched the cutter. He's going back to the slider. So I mean, expect to see some regression to the mean positively for him. Um, but he's also won like six world series games. Like he's like six. And, it's, it's just, he just wins in October. Yeah. yeah. You have Framber Valdez when he's on, he's literally one of the best pitchers in the league. You have Justin Verlander. Who's just a Greek God right now, but there's, there's realities to this staff. You have Justin Verlander who I, 
I think he's going to keep doing this, but there's a reality that he can hit a wall coming off Tommy John and being 39 years old. There's a reality that Luis Garcia uh, is young and he's going to have the ups and downs as a young pitcher. You have the the realities of Framber, you know, reverting back to the old Framber that walks people. Yeah. You have Jose Acuti right now that's is, is struggling peripherally and, and the fan base is after him, but, you know, he had a good start last week, so they're not on him this week. You have Lance and Jake coming off injuries. You don't know how sharp they're going to be. So shore it all up by go getting another arm and, and lessen the load for all those guys. Like, I I think we're in this unique position of like this Astro ball, raise ball, like just get a bunch of arms and let everyone just like row the boat together and keep yeah. going that direction. Because if they're on come October, that's five, six innings. Games are short. Because then yeah. you're going to Stanek, then you're going to Montero, then you're going to Naris, then you're going to Presley. Oh, by the way, you still got Maton. You probably Hunter Brown. You probably have all these yeah. other young dudes or another arm you're get. Games get short. Yep. And, and if you have that in October, that that carries you a long way. So I don't. It, it's like it's like insurance. Like shout out, shout out JJ, insurance, our guy for Apollo. But it's 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 like it's always there. Like it's protecting you. Like just yeah. just do it. Go get yeah. it. Especially in October, which we know that the Astros are built for. I mean, how many times do we see starters get through twice through the order and then boom, they get the early hook? Yeah. And then it's a bullpen game. And then it's a bullpen game for the rest of the way. How quick and how efficient can you get to your closer? So, yeah, you have a stable of arms. That's going to help you in October. That is 100% going to uh, help you in October. Trade deadline is right around the corner. Um, I All star break right around the corner. I can't believe uh, that we're damn near in July. Uh, Astros again off today. They welcome in the White Sox and the Mets. Uh, you want to uh, you want to preview that, or are we just going to let it play out how it goes? I'm going to vote that we just let it uh, play out. Yeah. We don't have good track records when we preview shit. Yeah, yeah, that's just me. Hey, does uh, producer De- uh, Josh have any um, have any insight on who's going to get traded? He usually has some uh, interesting takes. Uh, he's not in the room. Oh, he he's left not. Us. He's not in the room. He left us. We we moved to a downtown office right there by his own office. And, and his own office. And look, I'm pulling the curtain back since he's not here. He'll probably edit this out. But probably Josh is. He moved inside the loop. He's a city boy now. We have the office downtown. Um, he brought like six guitars to the office. Like he just sits in there and shreds all day. Like, what are we <laughs> doing? Where's what? the wherewithal? None. Like, what are we doing? There this is none. not. This is not John Mayer's, you know, 2001 tour. Like, oh my god, that's gonna do it. It was great to be <laughs> back on. We're gonna end on that one. Astros yeah. taking up. We're right. gonna be back. We're going back to two recording we two are. times a week. We're we're back. We are so back. We're so back. Hey, I see you're wearing 11.7. When does the uh, College World Series start? Is that Friday? I'm not gonna give you a plug because you're literally wearing it, and we. We at Apollo do enough plug for 11.7. They've been doing great stuff all year. Uh, Long they start tomorrow. Long tomorrow, Aggies, tomorrow, Sooners. Tomorrow. Yeah. Arkansas, the old Southwest Conference, back at it, huh? Yeah. The 17th, tomorrow, Friday, the 17th. Friday, Friday the 17th. Check out 11.7. Hell, yeah, I'm going to be glued to it, man. Right. I was up the other night when they were kicking the shit out of um, – when the Longhorns were kicking the shit out of uh, East Carolina at one oh, o'clock yeah. in the morning, seven hour rain delay. Yeah. Hey, you know, speaking of 11.7, Ben tried to come out and say that the East Carolina pirates were going to win an extra innings. Cause that dude struck out the side or whatever to start after the rain delay. And I said, that dude missed every spot. <laughs> you Horns, did say, I did say Horns that. are going to win seven to one. And he didn't acknowledge my tweet at all. No like, no comment, no nothing. And they they won what eleven to one, twelve to one, whatever 11 to it was. One. Yeah, yeah. Have some I wasn't, wearwithal, I wasn't I wasn't far off, but yeah. I mean just because so, it dude, just because a dude pumps in a ninety five mile an hour fastball as you should at yeah. the D one level, you know, just because he pumps it, he missed his spot by like that much. So I'll tie this in in the into into major league baseball too. I hate teams and organizations and fans that like create like a fake hype. Yeah, like. So in that game, in that instance, if you didn't watch, there was like a seven hour rain delay and there was still one out in the first inning before they had to come back into the game. So when the game finally started, like everyone was been drinking for seven hours because the elimination game winner go home. And like the, the guy was, you know, throwing right down the middle 97 and was like amped up and like 
pumping his chest and like doing all that stuff. And then they got a leadoff hit, and that guy was doing the same thing. I was like, this is just a, a, like a, an adrenaline bump, and then right. that, that adrenaline dump that's right behind it. It's you're just you're just gonna see a team that's just gonna be like staring that a thousand yards there, and that's exactly yeah. what we saw. And we see it every year in Major League Baseball too. You like f- like the fake artificial like you know, the flashing lights and bullshit and stuff. Yeah. Like when someone hits a home run, I'm like, bro, you're down five to one. Like, what are we doing here? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I get like, it. Like act like you've been there. Act like you've been here before. But I mean, it's, 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 it goes ties right back into what we saw in the White Sox last year. They were down and look, I they get it, man. Losing, fucking La Russa <laughs> comes out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And tries to make a story that Kendall Graveman throws at somebody. Now he's actually in your clubhouse. You try to you try to bring this fake hype and this fake hysteria and try to try to look fire for guys. Whatever you're doing, I don't think Tony everyone Richardson sees would, through it. Right, man. Right, everyone you know? sees through it. It'd be like us, like like standing standing at, and locking ourselves on Minute Maid Park with like an H Town versus everyone flag. Yeah, like oh, that's cool. That's gonna get some retweets and likes, but like. What are you doing? Right. Have some wherewithal. Have some wherewithal. That's going to do it. It is the wherewithal episode here on the Beyond the Diamond. Wherewithal here episode. on Beyond the Diamond podcast, sponsored by Bravado Spice here on the Apollo Podcast Network. Des, you got anything before we get out of here? Uh, Astros. Uh oh. Sweep the Yankees. There's the take. There's a prediction. We'll talk about it next week because we're doing yeah, we this a few times a week now. But we are so I bad. Get that off my chest. We are so back. That's going to do it for Apollo Dez. I am Brian Lima. Follow us on Twitter at BLima790, at Apollo Dez1, and of course, at Apollo HOU. Until next time, peace. Love you guys.